in the last presentation i explained you the data formats and also classified the registers the first classification was based on the input and output and we had serial input serial output serial input parallel output parallel input serial output and finally parallel input and parallel output this was based on the input and output we also classified the registers based on the application and we had shift registers shift registers and uh, the storage registers they are based on the application now we will study shift register the application is shifting and uh, the input and output format is serial input serial output so we are going to study shift registers with serial input and serial output this serial input and serial output is again divided into two types the first one is shift right mode the circuit here represents the shift right mode i am calling it shift right because the data is input to the left flip flop and the stored value is shifted to the right and finally we have our serial output if you understand this circuit you can easily have your shift left mode so i am not going to explain you the shift left mode but i will explain you the shift right mode and you can do the shift left mode by yourself so let's start with the shift register what it is it is a sequential circuit that is used for data storage, data transfer and certain arithmetic and logic operations. First I will explain you the working of the shift register, then we will plot the waveform and finally I will explain you the use of shift register in a real life. So let's start with this circuit. I have used four D flip flops and you can see clock is given to all these flip flops simultaneously and we have negative S triggered flip flops. D in is the input data that we want to store and it is connected to D3 the input of the flip flop 3 Q3 is the output of flip flop 3 and it is connected to D2 Q2 is connected to D1 Q1 is connected to D0 and Q0 is giving us the serial output so this is the circuit and initially I am assuming all these outputs Q3 Q2 Q1 and Q0 are a 0 so initially they are 0 okay and uh, i want to store the number one 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 in the shift register so what i have to do what is my first step the first step is to locate the lsb definitely one is my lsb and one is my msb and initially this one lsb is given as d3 and uh, we will see what are the outputs for the first falling edge so i will first write down the inputs and then we will find out the outputs and i have already written the output before this input is applied at d3 and they are zero so d3 is one d2 is definitely zero because q3 is zero and q3 is connected to d2 d1 is zero again because q2 is zero d0 is zero because q1 is zero and q0 we have to find out so let's see what we have for the first falling edge if you remember the d flip flop we had the clock d was the input and q and plus one was the output if i have clock as zero whatever be the value of d output is going to be memory q n if i have clock as high d is low output is going to be low if clock is high d is high output is going to be high so simply it is used for data storage if i want to store a zero i will give d equal to zero and i will have next state equal to zero if I want to store 1, I will make D equal to 1 and the next state is equal to 1. That's why I have used D flip flop because it is used for simple data storage. And uh, here D3 is equal to 1. So Q3 is going to be 1. D2 is equal to 0. So Q2 is 0. D1 is equal to 0. So Q1 is going to be 0. D0 is 0. So Q0 is also a zero so we have our output as one zero 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 so the output is one zero 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 for the first falling edge because of this changed output the input will also change and we have to find out this changed input we want to store one 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 in the shift register and for that initially i have given 
1 to the d3 now I have to give this one to d3 and again I will have d3 equal to 1 so this is the input for the flip-flop number 3 now we want to find out input for flip-flop number 2 that is d2 and d2 is equal to q3 q3 is 1 so d2 is going to be 1 d1 the input for flip-flop 1 is connected to q2 q2 is equal to 0 that's why d1 is equal to 0 d0 is connected to q1 q1 is 0 so d0 is 0 so we have our inputs 1 1 0 0 and we have to find out the output if the input is 1 the output is going to be 1 if the input is 0 the output is going to be 0 so we have our new outputs as 1 1 0 0 so we have the output as 1 1 0 0 this is for the next falling edge in the same way we have the input as 1 this one is given to d3 so we have input as 1 q3 is 1 that's why d2 is 1 q2 is 1 that's why d1 is 1 q1 is 0 so d0 is 0 and uh, we have input as 1 1 1 so the output will be 1 1 1 0 so we have output as 1 1 1 0 it is 1 1 1 0 and in the same way I have to introduce the last bit that is our MSB 1 to D3 so that we have a 1 1 1 1 stored in the shift register and for that the output will be 1 1 1 1 you can do it easily so this is the complete table for the shift register in which I want to store 1 1 1 1 let's try to complete this waveform this is my clock this is the first falling edge second third and a fourth and D in was my data input initially it was low then we have high throughout because it was equal to 1 1 1 1 for the first clock pulse it is high then again it is high then high and finally we have our MSB now we will find out the outputs Q3 Q2 Q1 and Q0 Q3 Q2 Q1 and Q0 were initially 0 so I will make them low And for the first falling edge, you can see Q3 is high, whereas Q2, Q1, and Q0 are low. So Q3 is high, Q2 is low, Q1 is low, and Q0 is also low. Now for the second falling edge, Q3 is high, Q2 is also high. So Q3 is high, Q2 is also high, Q1 was 0. And Q0 is also 0. For the third falling edge, Q3, Q2, and Q1 were high. So I will make them high. Q1 will go high. And Q0 is a low. Finally, for the fourth falling edge, all these outputs, Q3, Q2, Q1, and Q0 are high. So they are high. This is how the waveform will look and uh, you can easily find out the data stored in this. Initially here you can see the stored data is equal to 0 0 0 0. Then for uh, this clock pulse we have data as 1 0 0 0. For this I have 1 1 0 0. So I have 1 1 0 0 for this clock pulse I have 1 1 1 0 and finally I have 1 1 1 1 and this is what we want to store this was our number initially that we want to store and it is stored in the shift register and it is shifting you can see it is shifting let me show you why we call it shift register because the data is shifting this 0 was shifted here this 0 shifted here then again here this one you can see is shifted like this so the data is shifting that's why we call it shift register 
and it is a very simple concept we have used the diff flip flops and its properties to make this multi bit storage element now what are the use of this shift register especially if i talk about the serial in and serial out in this you can clearly see we need four clock pulses one two three four we need four clock pulses to store a four bit number and it is very beneficial when we have a long distance transmission for example if this is your transmitter and this one is your receiver and the distance between transmitter and receiver is let's say 5 kilometer and the data is entered in serial manner for this we require only one conductor this is my conductor and i require only a single conductor because data is entered in a serial manner if i want the parallel manner and i want to transmit four bit data then i need four conductors for that and the cost is definitely going to increase because the distance is large 5 kilometer is the distance and if i want parallel input then definitely i require 5 into 4 20 kilometers of wire whereas in this case i need 5 kilometer of wire so it is beneficial to use siso mode in case of long distance transmission so this is all about the shift registers and in the next presentation we will study serial in parallel out mode of the shift register so see you in the next one